there's an old joke. What's the difference between the clitoris and a pub? Every man knows how to find a pub. But is it men's fault? This ignorance about an important organ to women. Today we'll look at the basis for that ignorance. Research that's changing the way we think and also the exciting news that men and women alike are getting cliterate. When I was studying to be a surgeon, the textbook we used had a lot to say about the penis. The male urogenital triangle took up four pages. And then the female urogenital triangle started off like this. All the male formations and structures are present in the female, but modified greatly for functional reasons. Modifications? We're not modifications. I would try to educate the author of last. Some of the quotes from the book that got me going. The essential difference is the failure in the female of midline fusion of genital folds lacking the rigid support of the complete perineal membrane of the male and there are a few poorly developed pit-like glands said to be homologous with the prostate. More to the point, the clitoris, which as a young woman I was very aware of from the inside, was actually almost completely omitted from the book. There was a book written about the clitoris in 1866 by a British gynaecologist, Dr. Isaac Baker Brown. Isaac Baker Brown. His book is entitled On the Curability of Certain Forms of Insanity, Epilepsy, Catalepsy, and Hysteria in Females. What was the cure for this range of ailments? surgical removal of the clitoris. But it wasn't just in the UK that this operation was offered for this range of problems. It was in other parts of the Western world as well. Elizabeth Sheen, a medical anthropologist, put it this way. The clitoris was so unimportant to a normal woman so as not to be missed if removed. And yet lurking in its substance was the greatest threat to female welfare ever known. Intellectual and surgical removal of the clitoris is part of our cultural inheritance. In preparation for our final surgical exams as young urologists in 1993, I had the benefit of a tutorial from Professor John Hudson, a renowned paediatric surgeon who was talking to us about intersex surgery. It was clear listening to him that he really cared about preservation of the dorsal clitoral nerve and vessels at the time of this surgery. I found this a real breakthrough and it gave me great hope. I did ask him about becoming my supervisor for a proposed doctorate and, um, and he was a great supervisor. Around that time in urology and even today there's been a lot of focus in surgery, in prostate removal surgery on um, not harming the nerves to the penile erectile mechanism. I did a literature search at that time to see if there'd been similar work done in females, couldn't find anything. And so we started a research program um, mimicking the studies that had been done uh, on male anatomy and then following the nerves by dissection all the way from the spine forward past the rectum, cervix, uh, on the undersurface of the vaginal wall to the back of the clitoris. I had the benefit of access to incredible, uh, an incredible archive of fetal material um, from 
the late Professor Douglas Stevens, a doyen of embryology. But having studied these fetal tissues and the nerve studies, just increased my belief that the most important study to do was a study of the anatomy of the clitoris per se. Having finished my training then in the US, I came back and started a new research program. People ask me whether the establishment were supportive. They really provided resources and enormous expertise to this work. The Urology Society awarded me their highest fellowship. Um, the Royal Melbourne Hospital's Head of Surgery um, gave me the assistance of an incredibly gifted um, dissector in his own right and photographer um, Rob Plenter and the Department of Anatomy um, Colin Anderson, Professor Colin Anderson just knew how to get a piece of tissue that I was able to um, obtain and he would um, photograph it at exactly the right magnification in the exactly the right section to tell the story of the anatomy. Science is so much related to this communication, communication piece and, and medical art uh, complements that. We had the benefit of working with a great medical artist in Dr. Levent Effie as well. So an example of the work uh, you can see in this dissection. Um, so you can see the very large dorsal clitoral nerves arising at the pelvic side wall and going up underneath the pubic bone. Um, and then the same nerves you can see in this histology section or microscopic section at the glands of the clitoris and you can see there's very large nerve trunks in, in addition to the receptors for vibration and light touch. Gray's said in relation to these nerves, the female nerves, they were very small and supplied the clitoris. That was it. Anyway, that proved to be wrong. The nerves were very large at every age, even in children. and they would stay large all the way through um, even to that very sensitive tip of the clitoris. I received in the mail recently this 3D model from Dr E Mulligan who is definitely clitorate. Um, this may be a helpful way to um, understand the anatomy. So this is about life, this is life size but this is quite small but it gives you the idea of the clitoris tucking in under the bone as it does. These arms or crura unite as they go up under the bone and then join to form the body of the clitoris. They then, the body takes a sort of boomerang like path out under the bone and projecting into the mons or mound of the pubis ending in this highly sensitive um, tip or glands of the clitoris. These parts are called the bulbs and they uh, join together at what's called the root of the clitoris where the four organs unite. There's also another um, area that's called the pars intermedia and Professor Claire Yang has done some studies specifically on this it has conjoint blood vessels to unite all of these parts and it's immediately under the skin, a very uh, important anatomical area. One of the things that the lay public have coined is a concept of internal clitoris, which is pretty useful actually. So this is the only bit that can be seen from the outside the rest of it all being hidden from view. In elderly cadavers, in young cadavers, um, the clitoris is a very substantial organ. It's multiplanar and um, one of the changes we see with age uh, is the, these bulbs tend to shrink up towards the other parts of the clitoris. 
it was an incredible gift uh, from all of these donors, these selfless souls, um, this donation of their, their body. When I was working in the US, I had the privilege of working for Professor Edward McGuire, himself a pioneer of a new specialty female urology. One day he had a chance conversation with Professor John DeLancey, a um, guru, international guru of gynaecology and pelvic anatomy. John had been researching pelvic MR th uh, pelvic um, MRI studies and um, he shot me an email saying, Ed says, you've been studying the clitoris, we think we can see the clitoris on MRI, are you interested in collaborating? Well, let me think about that for about a microsecond. Um, anyway, it was the most incredible opportunity to be able to combine the dissection studies with this very complementary live anatomy um, that MRI brings. Norm Eisenberg, the Professor of Anatomy at Melbourne Uni, and Professor Chris Briggs and others, uh, added to these um, forms of anatomy, uh, surface anatomy, as they'd done for every other body part, in the development of their educational tool, Anatomedia. People ask me, has anatomy changed, the teaching of anatomy? And I would have to say our young doctors and other health workers at the University of Melbourne uh, have had the opportunity to become clitorate through the provision of Anatomedia. In 2007, working with Norm Eisenberg, we created a publication for the Journal of Sexual Medicine where we aimed to bring together um, anatomical concepts, but for health professionals more generally, but whilst maintaining that scientific validity. There's this crazy kind of cultural concept of vagina versus clitoris uh, and um, as though uh, is one or the other, where both organs are very important to female sexuality. This MRI helps you to understand the relationship between these two organs. So at the top, the highly vascular or intensely blood supplied organ, the clitoris. You can see its components here, the body, the bulbs, all wrapping around the upper aspect or into the mons, which is up here. Uh, and here's the urethra, which is sort of target-like on MR, and then the vaginal wall here. So the idea that they're um, completely separate organs is, is just wrong. And Grayers did say there's no relationship between the clitoris and the urethra, which uh, also proved to be incorrect. You can see again in this TV art from a documentary, Forbidden Pleasure, the relationship between uh, these parts. Clitoracy is gaining momentum. The clitoris is not, as the so-called father of anatomy, Vesalia, said in the 16th century, a new and useless part. Today we bring meaning to the word clitoracy. By the power of science, we're empowering women and men alike. Yes, the brain is where orgasm occurs, but it almost always occurs in the presence of clitoral stimulation. It's not that orgasm can't occur with out clitoral stimulation, it's just very unlikely. But how wonderful for people to understand these organs of pleasure much more. How great for the people who own them and for the people who love them. I'm going to show you some exciting resources that just seem to be manifesting. This is a box of clitorises that just arrived in the mail. 3D printed um, clitoris. It's amazing how uh, technology is aiding in this movement. But then more old-fashioned, uh, a little puppet 
um, showing the labia majora, menorah, the glands of the clitoris, and the internal parts of the clitoris um, for educational purposes. And this one, a model sent to me from some German model makers showing the pubis on the inside, the pink being the body and so forth, and the bulbs in blue. Journalist Melissa Fife won two awards for her work on getting clitoris in 2018. Hilary Burridge wrote the most uplifting book. Hard to believe a book called Female Mutilation could be uplifting. But she shares her vision um, for the steps to end female mutilation, giving us great hope. There are many resources online, documentaries and podcasts, as, long as, great, as, as, as well as great books um, to help in the movement of getting clitorate. For the future of this movement, I visualise a world where every person is clitorate, where schools provide accurate resources every time, where pornography actually serves and helps female sexuality, and where the world reflects upon the history of thousands of years of trauma to girls' clitorises, but commits to healthy change and protection against that mutilation where sex is about mutual pleasure, not one partner pursuing and the other resisting. Celebrate getting clitorate.